Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here. We want to do a video about area between curves in polar coordinates. We do a similar thing in rectangular coordinates where we have area between curves being different than just simply an area under a curve in rectangular coordinates. In polar curves, when we're taking area with integrals, there are two main types of problems we want to consider with area between polar curves. We have one where the regions are actually connected to or contain the pole, the origin, and others where regions do not contain the pole or the origin. Let's look at both of these. For regions that contain the pole, it's very likely that when you are looking at the boundary of your region and you're taking sectors coming out from the origin, that you may have your sectors going to one curve and then changing and going to another curve. When this happens, we'll need to use more than one integral to do this. If you look at this example here, if I want to find the area between the circle and the cardioid that's inside both of them, I'm going to go ahead and just look at the top half of that region and then we could multiply by two. So this is the top half of the region filled with sectors. What you'll notice, I think, if you look at this, sectors coming out from the pole are first going to our circle and then they are actually going to a boundary on the cardioid. So if we imagine starting sort of on the axis and filling this space with sectors, my sectors would first go out from the origin to the circle, and then at the intersection point, they are going to change, and my sectors will then be going out to the cardioid curve to fill the rest of the top half of my space that I'm trying to find area. So I think you can probably tell that we'll need two integrals. We'll need an integral that calculates some of the area going out to the circle, and then we'll need another integral that calculates the area going out to the cardioid for the other part of this. Um, it's certainly split up where we have our intersection points. So my sector, if you can imagine going straight out to the intersection point, on one side we're going to be going out to the circle. On the other side of that intersection point, our sectors will be going out to the cardioid. When we split this up into two integrals, we'll use the idea area equals one half the integral from alpha to beta of the function squared d theta. So my first piece, my integral here involving the circle, is going to have the function of the circle squared, and that will be this piece of the area. If we look on the other side of the sector that goes out to our intersection point, now our function will be the cardioid, so we'll have one half integral cardioid function squared d theta. And we want to make a note that these bounds are going to be different, right? They're not all the same. So when we think about from here alpha to here beta, this is straight to the right, so it's likely an angle of zero. And then up to beta, we'll need to figure out what that intersection point is. Remember that we can find intersection points usually by setting things equal to each other and we would need to solve for theta in this case to find our beta. Now my second angle, if I travel counterclockwise along the curve, I would be starting at beta and I would come down to gamma here. So my integral would be from beta to gamma. So my first integral will be from alpha to beta and then at beta I will take over on the new curve and go from beta to my final bound here, gamma. One thing we notice about gamma I think is our sectors are approaching the pole as we get to gamma. So since gamma is really at the pole, we know that that's when r equals zero. So if we wanted to find this bound, gamma, we could set r equal to zero on the cardioid function and find that bound. In our other case, where regions don't connect to the pole, in this case you'll have one function that is farther away from the pole probably, and another function that is closer into the pole. And when we compute sectors, we'll need to compute the idea of finding the outer area and subtracting out the inner missing area, much in the same way that when we did area between curves above an axis, we took the higher function and subtracted the lower function. So let's go back to this region. Let's imagine trying to find the area outside the circle but inside the cardioid. So if I just use sectors coming out from the pole and try and fill that space, you can see I have a bunch of extra stuff in there that I don't want. I have a lot of sector inside of the circle that I don't want to calculate. I only want to be filling the space outside of the circle but inside of the cardioid. So when we're trying to find this area, we'll actually sum up the area inside of the cardioid from alpha to beta and subtract out the amount of stuff that is inside of the circle from alpha to beta on the same sectors. Seeing how that works with our formula, so we'll have our one-half function squared integrated d theta from alpha to beta. So what we'll need to do is we will need to take the area inside of the cardioid and we'll need to subtract out the sector area that we get inside of the circle. 
we can really think of these as one integral of f squared minus g squared, where we have one half integral of the outer function in terms of theta squared minus the inner function in terms of theta squared. Okay, hopefully this gives you some hints about how to picture area between polar curves either connected to the origin or not connected to the origin. Thanks for watching everybody. Check out our example videos on finding area between polar curves with integrals. We'll see you in the next video.